Fellow Picosians and friends, this is your host Sanjeev Bhavani, welcoming you to another episode of my show, The World is My Oyster, a show that will introduce you to Picosians who have done us all proud through their achievements in their sparkling careers. Several Picosians have practically attained celebrity status due to frequent mentions in media for their diverse and outstanding contributions, like the late astronaut Kalpana Chawla. the late actor and satirist Jaspal Bhatti or the popular rap artist Badsha however there are hundreds of other glittering stars that Punjab Engineering College Chandigarh has produced over the years in its glorious 99 year old history the purpose of this show is to get you to meet and celebrate such pecosians who have been shining brightly in india or in lands far away the show is not just about pecosian pride it's also about national pride and professional success this show also attempts to guide aspiring engineers on various fields and professional paths that lie before them once they complete their engineering i hope this show helps you choose the right career path where you too can shine in this episode i am pleased to introduce a fellow picosian and a dear friend though senior to me by a year maharashtra's hope lok ayukt honorable sanjay bhartia sanjay graduated from pc in 1982 as a mechanical engineer and is an mba from southern cross university australia he was a maharashtra cadre ias officer of 1985 batch in the rank of chief secretary of the state and secretary in government of india he has 35 years of experience in serving at various senior levels in the government of india and the government of maharashtra He superannuated as chairman Mumbai Port Trust and chairman Indian Ports Association in July 2020. He has held a number of important positions, like vice chairman and managing director Sidco, commissioner Sales Tax Maharashtra, managing director Maharashtra State Electricity Distribution Company, secretary Maharashtra State Electricity Board, additional director general Yashada. director heavy industries government of india collector gachiroli chief executive officer zila parishad solapur and prant officer karveer district kolapur etc and has brought transparency reforms in management and hr development in all these organizations with the help of meditation techniques he has been bestowed a number of awards such as ananya award for fighting against corruption E Governance Awards, Rajiv Gandhi Gatiman Prashasan Award, Maha Shilpkar Award, Bloomberg Award, and Traveller Today's Award for contribution to the development of cruise tourism in India. His entire glittering career is replete with successes at the diverse challenges that came his way. With his trademark honesty, hard work, commitment, uncompromising yet understanding behaviour. he has managed to win the support of all stakeholders and the admiration of his teams an embodiment of morals uprightness and integrity he was appointed as the op lok ayukta of maharashtra state on the 28th of august 2020 he is a practitioner of meditation and has been practicing meditation for the last two decades he has delivered several talks on heartfulness and led many yoga camps and international yoga day celebrations so without further ado let us meet the man of the hour honorable sanjay bhatia welcome to the show uh, honorable sanjay bhatia the uplok ayukt of maharashtra state <laughs> so proud to have you it's it's a privilege uh, for me to spend time with you after your recent uh, title of the uplok ayukt the first one from pc i'm sure so well the show is all yours and uh, anything that you would like to say before we start thanks and new it's a pleasure to join a pc uh, interview and as it is so proud of being from pc uh, ashish and me both were you remember uh, from punjab engineering college and uh, The other day you took an interview of Atul Karwal, one of our dearest friends, 
So it's a pleasure to be with you, Sanjeev, and uh, let's start. Thank you so much. Yeah. Let's make a start with 1982, the year you graduated from PEC. I'm sure there were several uh, career options uh, that uh, you had. What made you choose IS as the career? So, from the campus interview, I got into Engineers India Limited. And from in EIL, I made up my mind. When I saw uh, our what we were doing in EIL and what an IS officer does, my father is an IS officer. And, and uh, uh, so, at that time, I felt that uh, the work which an IS officer can do is uh, much bigger canvas than if I continue in an institute like Engineers and Limited, where I am in a particular department. And I had also seen that uh, in EIL, uh, the CMD or the board of directors were about 15 years old IS officers. Whereas in 30 years, I would have reached the GM level or maybe a joint director level. So that was at that time. Uh, in fact, at that time, I was very, very, very competitive also and very ambitious. So that was the reason I thought of appearing for IS. Went uh, back to the college, joined as a Adokia. Do you remember Adokia? Adok lecturer. And uh, uh, then taught to the mechanical engineering students for I think six months or so. That was the time in which I did my preparation. And I appeared for IS. The first attempt came in income tax. That is where I got married. And in the second attempt came into IS. Wonderful. So lots of good things happened in that year for you. Yeah. Yes, I, I can see your point. Uh, we have uh, so many of uh, our colleagues who joined EIL. And the IL used to be one of the prized jobs uh, that was available in our times on the campus. And you're right in saying that uh, people who have stayed on there, uh, in fact, your own batchmate, uh, Nisha Piyush, who probably just uh, uh, retired after completing her mm -hmm. career there. Uh, though she did extremely well, but yes, general manager is all uh, the level that one should, could, could reach. Whereas I see that in your own career, uh, apart from the jobs that you were directly assigned to, the, the, the assignments uh, which were given to you uh, on your IS uh, officer uh, period, you also were assigned uh, a, as a government nominee on the board of several companies uh, where the government had uh, an interest. And that includes uh, some private sector companies like Tata Power, if I'm not mistaken. So... Uh, Definitely, I mean, you've got to see a lot more uh, much earlier in your career. And hence, I see that your decision was very well founded. Coming to this amazing career that you've had, you've had challenges all through in your career. Uh, so much has been talked about you, written about you, that uh, despite our not having been in touch for so many years, in a way, we were in touch whether virtually, whether occasionally at uh, various get-togethers. But uh, I get to realize that it's been an extremely challenging career for you. An upright person working in the government uh, possibly is a bigger challenge than most others who accept the system as it is. You have walked into practically every assignment and decided to bring about change. And as a change agent, in every one of these organizations, some of them pretty notorious uh, for the levels of corruption that were there. What was the most challenging period of your career? Uh, yeah, people ask me which was the most interesting. You are asking me which was the most challenging. <laughs> okay, so the most challenging was probably this, uh, uh, the Commissioner Sales Tax Maharashtra. Right. Uh, you know, um, from my career profile, if you've seen, then I have been fighting against corruption all the time. So there also, I did complete computerization of uh, the sales tax department of Maharashtra and also got after a number of scams. Uh, 
there was a scam called a palghar scam in maharashtra or sales tax and i had to suspend a number of very senior officers at that level and they joined forces and got after me started sending complaints everything all that sort of a thing and there was almost a fight going on thankfully the government was completely with me at that time the deputy chief minister the chief minister and we started anti corruption uh, proceedings open inquiry proceedings against all of them and slowly it cooled down but it was the most challenging because it was a pressure high pressure job because i was catching one scam after another so one scam another scam which i caught was there were about 25000 crores of hawala operation so you can uh, imagine how many people get after you in such a situation i can i can visualize uh, so if i was the most challenging uh, sorry to interrupt you there but i don't think it was 25000 crores it was an excess of 30000 crores i, I remember yeah, was, the figures pretty distinctly because yeah. uh, this uh, this stay of yours as the commissioner of sales tax for maharashtra was featured in uh, india today and uh, as well as business today and i remember reading that uh, feature on you which talks about an upright officer who has brought about significant changes you not only managed to straighten out a lot of people in the department uh, your computerization of uh, return filing uh, payment receipts and even refunds uh, was mentioned as uh, one of the things that you did over there what was interesting was uh, that the business community in mumbai actually welcomed the changes uh from what i read uh, in the thing that they they are much happier paying their taxes uh, rather than having to deal with the officers who used to visit them uh your stay uh, was it for two years uh, as a commissioner no sales so i was in sales tax department for about five five more than five years more than five and years you know what the main thing uh, i told you about the challenges and the pressure but the main change which we did in sales tax and that is where i started my meditation and so i started meditation classes in all the trainings in sales tax department meditation was introduced and i found significant change happening in people significant change uh, you know after engineering we all did mbas and we have this subject called change management and they teach you a lot of tools to change people i am i'll tell you none of them work this is the only tool which i found which worked <laughs> that uh, uh, people started doing meditation started changing internally and for sanjeev for you also and all my pc friends who are leaders or heading organizations this is one change which brought loyalty to the organization and loyalty to me so i saw that introducing meditation was very very beneficial and that is why this was the starting point from sales tax and from then to sidco again meditation was introduced then in the port also and i'll tell you that story subsequently yes so uh, whatever you want to give the credit to the point is unless a person like you was there a revenue increase from 24000 crores to 65000 crores in the sales tax uh, department does not just happen you need people who not only are upright who are courageous and people who can carry their team with them a lot of credit i have noticed you have been giving and you have been practicing meditation now for uh, two decades i guess you have been giving a lot of credit to meditation to getting the support of your team through meditation and heartfulness as you call it i uh, went through one of your tech talks and i'll share a portion of that uh, with our viewers uh, in a while but what you seem to be giving a lot of credit to maybe it works for you that way as a leader it is the fact that you are doing everything that you can to keep people in your team happy you understand their problems you are spending time with them basically in every assignment you have addressed all the stakeholders and their concerns personally as a well as a non believer let's say 
I'm still in that uh, work hard and party mode. So <laughs> you will relate to that. In that, as, as a leader in an organization, as a CEO, as whatever the role is, you have carried your team with you. You have understood their problems, which is why they stand with you. I think people need honest people in the lead in this nation, as they do probably everywhere in the world. But when they have somebody who's leading by personal example, a lot of them fall in line. Some of them obviously are concerned about what they lose uh, because of the dubious measures that they have been using uh, to fill their pockets. But I, I would give all that credit to you. You can pass it on to your guru in mindfulness, the people that uh, have supported you through that. But at the end of the day, I think you've been an excellent leader, which has brought about so much of change in so many organizations. And it's remarkable to see that in government service, a person who has taken very bold decisions. Uh, I recall one more instance, which uh, it requires ultimate guts uh, for a person in your position. Uh, I think you were the managing director of. Uh, Maharashtra State Electricity Distribution Company. Uh, if you don't mind, I would like to relate that uh, instance and you can correct me if I've got it wrong. But due to non-payment of electricity bills, you ordered that the power supply to the chief minister's residence should be disconnected and it was done. I can't think of another uh, government official, bureaucrat, who would have such courage to do it and I'm not going into which party it was and who the person was but firstly tell me did I get that correctly and secondly <laughs> what were the consequences okay. okay so it was I uh, you first of all you mentioned my meditation so I want to talk about that then I'll come to this disconnection of electricity you know I was not like that earlier if you remember, I was always honest that there's no difference in that part. But the personality which you used to see in the college is not the same personality now at all. It's completely changed. And I attribute it to meditation. I am much more compassionate, more balanced. Like you said, talking to all stakeholders, all these things started entering into the personality after the meditation started. And uh, I went very, very deep into meditation. It's been 20 years. Uh, so I do attribute it to meditation, this change of personality, the change of whatever I was doing, the work-life change, uh, efficiency of the work improved, concentration levels improved, uh, family life changed when Anuradha, my wife, also started doing meditation. Then the kids started doing meditation and the atmosphere changed in the house also. And like you said, the uh, fam, this, uh, party type. So I was a party type completely, but then uh, it was completely over because now uh, it's a different ball game. I stopped drinking, I stopped eating uh, non vegetarian. So this whole thing changed. And then subsequently, this probably is not the occasion to discuss that. I also started getting revelations of what is the purpose of life, what is the reality. And then went deeper and deeper into that. Now, coming to your question about uh, the disconnection of electricity. You know, I, I was, uh, I used to be quite strict. So I had, there were 1 lakh and 30,000 employees in, uh, in that electricity distribution company. And uh, I had given a direction that anybody who's not paying electricity, three warnings and then go and disconnect. So this, uh, Junior engineer of mine in Nagpur went and disconnected the uh, CN residence electricity. I did not specifically order that. I did not specifically order that. But later on, when the repercussions started, I supported that. So I was asked to suspend the junior engineer as well as the superintendent engineer, and I refused. So that is how I got transferred from there and was sent for uh, as additional director general training in Pune. So that was the repercussion. But my real repercussion is that that is where I found, because when I went to Yashoda, 
from Yashoda, that is Pune. I went on election duty to Bagpat, and that is the place where I got to know about Sahaj Marg, heartfulness, the meditation. So I have a very good feeling about this incident because that led me to the meditation which I needed to do. So I am very happy about that. Sanjay, as I see it, uh, this is one of those uh, incidents in your in your life and your career, which have got you the position, and uh, which people recognized that this is a man who should be an Uplokayu, because in your current uh, role, you will come across. Uh, I mean, uh, to those who are not uh, clear as to what an Uplokayu is, uh, we are talking about. Sanjay being in the position of a high court judge, uh, he's an ombudsman where he invest or uh, hears cases uh, regarding government corruption in the government departments. So people who are being uh, pushed against the wall by government employees unfairly, those are the kind of cases that uh, Sanjay would be hearing and. passing judgment on now this can obviously come only from a person who is absolutely honest whose integrity is beyond doubt who has taken and faced these challenges all through his career the electricity board uh, incident uh, was one of them and i'm glad that you stood up and stood for your je and superintending engineer and did not allow them to be removed because i can understand the kind of pressure that you must have had on you then It's been eleven years now. It has completely changed my life. Completely means completely. Personality. I was an aggressive personality, Punjabi. It is when I give a psychology test now. I am in the middle stage, neither A side nor B side, in the middle. Uh, much more balanced. Then. i'll tell you about the work life in the work life i found that the concentration levels went up very substantially uh, another thing happened you know uh, you all you are you are all studying and you study in college you get knowledge when you go into the field you get experience knowledge plus experience makes it wisdom there is something above that also which is called intuition i saw my intuition had developed the right file as bureaucrat i would be opening the correct files i would be opening the correct page of that file the intuition had developed social life changed i was very fond of drinking earlier i had a bar whenever i would go abroad i would get a bottle from that country keep it in my bar now that bar is full of yogic transmission books so drinking has gone away completely and what i am emphasizing is without making any conscious efforts anything which when you are on your right path nature conspires to ensure that anything which doesn't suit the right path it starts withering away this is what happened family life now in family life uh, my wife is also a very senior officer of the income tax department so two big egos so you can imagine the earlier situation whenever we would have a fight it would last 10 days 12 days after doing this meditation and especially after she also started doing this meditation uh we still have fights but they don't last even the thoughts of the uh, fight don't remain after about 10 15 minutes in fact i forget what caused the fight the sting goes away so moving on to Uh, your stay as the vice chairman and managing director of sitco sitco being the organization for people who are not aware and especially because in uh, settled in other parts of the world is the one organization which has built the infrastructure all around mumbai uh, the entire navi mumbai area has been brought up and developed by sitco now one of the interesting things that happened during sanjay's uh, career was when he took over as the managing director of sitco this was a good 13 to 14 years after the announcement of a new international airport uh, to be built in navi mumbai had been made the project was stuck for that long 
purely because uh, the uh, the area, the land that was required, about a thousand hectares was available uh, to Sitco for development. It was uh, the government land, and an additional area of I think two hundred uh, hectares was required, which was uh, with farmers and private individuals uh, who were refusing to give the land over to the government. Hence, the project had been stalled. Sanjay, you incredibly managed to turn this around when you took over at Sitco. I think within a period of a year, you made the impossible happen. Something which was stuck for 14 years. You managed to get people to volunteer and hand over that 200 hectares of land, due to which finally that project got a green light and is on. How did you manage to do this? And I'm sure that you are again going to come to heartfulness, mindfulness, and meditation. But as I said earlier, it takes a lot more because not everybody is a believer. You obviously given them convincing enough reasons, apart from being able to convince them that you are one of them and you have their interest at heart. I'd like you to shed some light on this, please. So this uh, project was, uh, Bhumi Pujan was done in 1997 and I joined in 2013 and the project was just the Bhumi Pujan with a board and nothing had happened. Uh, one of the agendas which was given by the then government to me was that this airport should start. Uh, so besides doing discussions with the project affected persons, you know what, the PAPs and uh, CITCO were like this, loggerheads with each other. They did not trust each other at all. Because CITCO had originally acquired their lands and their, whatever their demands were, they had not been met. So they did not trust each other at all. So my main job was building this trust. And uh, regular discussions, giving them good offers, giving them offers where they can shift Besides doing that, I started like uh, I started meditation in Sitco and I started meditation in the PAP. And then they started doing joint meditation. Uh, when the joint meditation, I would have to conduct the joint meditation, otherwise they would not even sit together. So when the joint meditation started slowly, and it was not one year, it took about two years. It took me two years for everybody to get convinced. And then about 98 to 99% of those PAPs surrendered their land. And then we invited a tender and uh, the project has started at that time. So I'm sure in the next about two, three years, the second airport for Mumbai will be ready, which will be a much bigger airport than what we have today in Mumbai. And I attribute it to the meditation. Yes, sir. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, the Nana Smart City uh, that uh, you started work on, I believe it's 600 square kilometers in area, is that uh, a part of uh, this project, of this land, or is that in addition to uh, what you're doing uh, with the international airport? No, so airport is what you needed to make the airport. But whenever an airport comes, the areas near that need to be redeveloped. So this was airport notified area, Nana. Nana is actually a notified area of the airport. And we took a huge area, but then again, this is issue of by this, by the year 15, when we started, people were not reluctant, very, very reluctant to go in for allow land acquisition to take place. So therefore, we came up with a very different scheme that uh, it will be a joint project where the farmers and Sitco both gain and develop that area completely. So this whole Naina concept was, uh, I discussed with various town planners, various acquisition authorities of the country, and we came up with this new model. And uh, it was successful because the first project of Naina is right now going on. Otherwise, it's impossible to acquire such big lands near Mumbai. Uh, now, with the sharing sort of a thing, where they also win, if the development takes place, they win. This is a win-win situation for both. And here also in Naina, also the PAPs did meditation along with us. So they joined together and this is going on. The project is going on. Yeah. 
it will be the biggest city probably probably in the world amazing congratulations on that as well and uh, the way we are going about this i think by evening i would be a converted man i'm probably going <laughs> to draw bottles from my bar and <laughs> put in them books on meditation, meditation. <laughs> but i need a personal no, no, you don't need to stop the bar <laughs> all right yeah so uh, i also understand that you uh, started work on the development of the metro for uh, navi mumbai is that going to go across uh, because uh, the the uh, is that the harbor harbor line which goes through navi mumbai currently uh, that uh, seems to connect uh, things in navi mumbai pretty well right up to cbd and possibly even beyond uh but uh, with the airport uh, is it uh, another additional line which the metro would be which would connect uh from washi to yeah. the airport yeah it's it's actually from the airport as well as internally in navi mumbai uh, navi mumbai itself had developed so much that it needed a metro connection so these are the metro connections inside navi mumbai it is not even not only connecting uh, mumbai and the airport but it is also connecting pane so from all three sides uh, metro connections are there for inside uh, inside navi mumbai the time had come for uh, navi mumbai metro to start and uh, actually i took help of one of my batchmates shiva sailam he was the guy who made the bangalore uh, metro uh, and i invited him over asked him to guide us he guided uh and this metro had started and i i think it is ne- almost nearing completion some phases are over excellent uh now another successful to new york uh sitco and now you get uh, to join as the chairman and managing director ceo of uh, mumbai port trust mumbai port trust uh, which uh, as a port uh, i think in the 70s was the largest port that we had possibly in the country or maybe vice i was there i'm not too sure uh, not not somebody who has a lot of knowledge about shipping except from a lot of friends who have, who I have in the navy uh, but uh, after the uh, jawaharlal nehru port trust came up which i think would have been early 80s because i was in cmc then and we were doing the computerization for jnpt as a, it was a large project which we were doing around 87 so uh, there's a lot of business which obviously shifted or majority of the business would have shifted to jnpt i understand that uh, mumbai port trust when you took over had 40000 pensioners and 10000 employees on rolls and i remember you remarking somewhere that possibly there was work for about 1500 employees at that point of time you were obviously running low on revenues uh, there was a large uh, land bank which was available to you uh, which was not really finding any purpose and you started this entirely new direction for mumbai port trust which is cruise tourism for you to get international cruise lines to come into india and i think these names include coaster cruises of italy uh, norwegian cruises uh, uh, the royal caribbean if i'm not mistaken uh, jalesh i think was one of the first uh, international cruises which came in from the middle east for you to get all these people suddenly interested in coming to india for their cruises india has always had a population which loves to cruise we have taken flights to singapore we have taken flights to hong kong to go on cruises from there uh, a lot of us uh, i know go to the us and take uh, cruises from there or to parts of uh, europe especially norway you actually have been a great blessing for all these uh, people who love cruise tourism by giving them an opportunity to board these cruises right from india how did you get these international uh, cruise lines to take interest and come to mbt okay so uh, when i joined mumbai port it was almost like a dying port because there are lands all over but uh, dilapidated go downs slums 
the work culture was also such that because there were so many pensioners the revenue was not there and uh, although in like in the 70s it was the biggest sport but because of jnpt it had become a dying sport and people were almost giving up on this sport uh, so that is the time when uh, we did some studies on the ports which were in metropolitan cities for example uh, london uh, even miami then uh, busan in korea south korea now these were all ports which were there in metropolitan cities and around them metropolitan cities the huge cities came up and slowly they started shifting towards cruise and water transport business besides doing cargo so that is uh we came to this conclusion that we need to go in this full uh with full pressure so at the national level uh, i requested the shipping ministry and we formed the task force uh, of ministry of tourism and ministry of uh, shipping and uh, we were able to give lot of concessions to that to the cruise business in mumbai port i almost give uh, i said you just come give me a wish list in fact at that time we were having a maritime india summit and uh, this cruise business uh, is just five owners all over the world five big companies one of the owners mr dingle was here for that maritime india summit and i had a meeting with him so i asked him to give him give me a wish list he gave me a wish list with the government of india with the government of maharashtra and the port we fulfilled that wish and within about 4 months each sent a first ship costa ship came from there and uh, then many other ships started then indian ships started mumbai go mumbai goa started in fact in the first year itself we got about 40 calling ships but by the time i left uh, before, just before covid when covid has stopped everything again uh, we had about 300 calling wonderful so from 40 it went to 300 ships which came to uh, mumbai port and because they came to mumbai port they also went to goa port they also went to new mangalore port cochin port so all the ports uh, which had some cruise business started flourishing so this cruise business is a new business for the country because all like everyone like sanjeev he go abroad for uh, taking a cruise uh, now people have started taking cruises here there are weddings happening in the cruises there are off sites of the companies happening in cruises and it's become a very good holiday 3 days 5 days 7 day holidays and uh, somewhere i became the champion for the Uh, cruise business even now even after i have left these guys are still after me um, when is the new business start when is uh, when is the covid thing getting over when can we start business can we push with the state state government can we push with the government of india so but it's it's been a successful venture we are just waiting for this covid thing to be over and all those 200 to 300 ships will be back oh yes all of us who been in self quarantine since march uh, i think we all desperate to get away and get out of home and uh, i'm sure uh, i'd love to take a cruise as soon as uh, we know that we have a vaccine and movement has started and that life can be normal again but i think it's going to take time uh, not an expert so i will not comment for covid uh, while you were still there uh, you also set up a hospital at mumbai port trust uh, several beds i'm not sure whether it was a thousand bed hospital or more uh, but uh, no, hold on i'll i'll correct you on that uh, there was an existing uh, hospital which was running about 100 beds we converted into a covid hospital and added number of beds on that so that it is able to look after our pensioners and our employees uh, because we have 40000 pensioners and uh, you know in the beginning it was terrible so these pensioners uh, they were waiting till the last moment the lockdown was there and suddenly a message would come that he is in a bad shape and by the time he is brought to the hospital he's dead so we have had about 175 deaths uh, happening in the hospital but uh, slowly uh, we were able to do the improvement in this hospital 
and you know we started a new scheme uh, you know this 40000 pensioners so every head of department was told to prepare a team of noble officers and they were to call up every pensioner out of these 40000 people and check their medical status and if they need an ambulance we will send an ambulance and pick, pick them up and bring them here and anybody who was coming even today there are i think about 180 patients in the hospital at the moment because we keep increasing the beds uh so they are all brought by us their families looked after by these noble officers they are con- constantly in touch you know the fear which was there in the beginning at least that fear is not there anymore but it was absolutely a taboo nobody was ready in the beginning not even to ready to work as a noble officer but slowly i think the courage came and uh, this whole thing was quite successful then we added a covid ashram to that i don't know whether you are aware of that part uh, those who were asymptomatic and they were crowding in the hospital after two days in the hospital we shifted them to another dilapidated building which we renovated converted it into an ashram where they shift for 8 days and in those 8 days they have to do yoga and meditation mandatorily so by the time they come out they are regular meditators and yoga guys and it's been quite a successful experiment uh, all of them have come out well there is not a single uh, mortality in the covid ashram and uh, in fact after a day or two all the patients in the hospital they start saying please shift us to the covid ashram because they get more freedom there they are able to do these things and all this it's not you don't actually go there and conduct meditation and yoga it's all on like this what we are talking all on the internet so we have to fit televisions there we have to fit internet connections and get yoga teachers meditation teachers to conduct all this Oh, along with steam inhalation kada and everything so this is this was a successful experiment wonderful so you found the right medium now to convert the world yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> get everyone into meditation and mindfulness heartfulness anyway as long as there is love which is going across from one soul to the other i think we need a lot more of that in this world so great that you are doing it somebody is doing it with passion passion yeah you showed your passion there and with a lot of heart i heartfulness lot of heart lot of love fullness is a lot of heart right yeah sanjay coming to your family an extremely accomplished family if we look at it uh, i see where you get uh, a lot of qualities from your father being an is officer himself having served as one your brother ashish my classmate uh, the director general of police before that he was a central vigilance commissioner uh, in gujarat for a period of time your wife uh, a chief uh, principal commissioner Ms. principal chief commissioner income tax chief commissioner in income tax uh, in a place like uh, mumbai i'm sure there be hordes of people would like to meet you and chase you and request favors and i'm sure they will all fail because you people are so upright <laughs> there is no question that in case people are not following the law they cannot help i expect any assistance from you or any concessions from you we've seen that uh witness that through your actions on your various assignments how does that uh, your your two lovely daughters how did that uh, affect them did they find you people as very strict parents uh too many uh the artistics that no, you have i i don't uh, sanjeev i don't think so and fact at home they have full freedom and they are the ones who are the dictators at home both the girls uh if they they are the law at home uh again like i mentioned in the beginning my family life uh, got transformed when everybody started doing meditation earlier it was like anyone in the other family it's a different family their uh, 
and the, and and let me tell you the two daughters they don't do meditation regularly so if that is for you they don't need to do meditation regularly but what happens is whenever they are feeling low they say papa come give me a sitting and after that everything is okay meditation sitting so they know the youngsters they know that there is a tool by which majority of the problems can be solved they use it rarely they use it rarely but they know it is available so this is what even uh, i keep giving this message to today's youngsters committing suicide and all that even if you don't practice regularly the meditation you should learn this practice it maybe infrequently but you will have this knowledge that that is there and behind you that is the backing which is there to solve majority of the problems because everything is psychosomatic everything is psychosomatic so this is what is happening with my girls uh, they have done well in life uh, one is married they are both working husband and wife working in pwc last time sudanshu sudanshu is a maharashtrian by the way all she right got, uh, he she got this a love marriage she got married to a maharashtrian boy working in pwc and the younger one sargun is in l'oreal of doing her mba of my sb so they're doing well but again like i told you real strength is the meditation yes sir when you can change the world you definitely have made a start at home coming to what would you give now as career advice to the youngsters from your own daughters to young engineers precocians and other engineers we have a multitude of engineering colleges across the country what would be your advice to them in terms of picking a career and what they should be doing after their engineering okay so uh, sanjeev uh, normally i speak about three things in this first is that i believe that every person is unique and the only thing which that person needs to do is find what he is unique at and how do you find that if that is very interesting you lose yourself when you are doing that so i would say to all the engineers cc other colleges also everyone needs to find what you are unique at what is your unique talent which you can excel at you which you going to love doing it so do please do that rather than get into the rat race and say everybody is going in a particular direction no find your uniqueness and follow that up life is going to be very successful and very easy if you are able to do that this is one lesson second lesson which i normally which i have also learned is uh, we used to think that competition aggression are the things which work in real life they don't work the real thing which works is teamwork and uh, i think everybody has heard of this term called ubuntu uh, okay i'll i'll describe it you know in india or in any other country america anywhere if we line up 10 uh, students boys girls and tell them that there is a cake out there whoever comes first will go and get the cake will get the cake they will run whoever gets first will get the cake in africa this is what they were in a village called ubuntu ubuntu the term has come from there when they were asked to do this they all held hands walked together to the cake and shared it this is teamwork so this is what is my message to the engineers that this is what is going to work people are going to trust you if you are a real team player rather than being competitive trying to go ahead getting another promotion in fact i completely forgot about, about all that all this competition and uh, getting a better posting and all that after i started doing my meditation and I, when i learned this lesson and after that everybody is helping me i mean i am i am very very surprised that i am the one who is getting the good posting although i don't want i'm not even looking for or trying to get a good posting this is what sidco and all were very very important posts 
and with my reputation of being honest why would government post you to a position where uh, i won't say anything more but i was getting those posts so my message to the youngsters is this rather than competing compete only with yourself if you want to compete be a team player go together build trust that is what is going to make you successful in life this is the second one and the third one of course is my pet if you are not doing meditation you need to do meditation to really understand what is the purpose of your life and what is the reality and in 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 spirituality we use a word called invert endo everything sanjeev everything what you see reality is reverse of that this is the word called invert endo if you are, if you think you can achieve something by this method reality is absolutely reverse of that but people start getting to know this reality when they start doing meditation has to come from inside so these are the three messages sanjeev for anybody who's listening here uh, this is these are the lessons which i have learned a lot of people will be listening to this and watching this not just uh, today but uh, for the years to come that is why it goes up permanently on our youtube channel and i'm sure uh, pc will also use snippets of this to to actually address students uh, who are there at some stage uh, it's it's always great to have the greats from college uh, telling and coming out with these messages so basically what you have said three things that everybody needs to keep in mind one follow your passion second is team work which is ubuntu and the third being spirituality finding out what you are about and finding yourself i think we will all time take time to get to find ourselves uh following one's passion is something which uh, i think is much easier for the youngsters to achieve they they understand and they are very passionate today's generation uh they're exposed uh, to a lot more information which helps them uh, understand the world slightly better than the limited uh, understanding that we had of the world from our peer groups our parents and uh, doordarshan so there's an abundance of information available and i'm sure that uh, with your advice they will take the right choices and build careers which will also be sparkling careers we all aspire to achieve uh, what you have achieved in your life and there's a lot more i'm sure that you will continue doing for this country for the people of this country keep up with the good work sanjeev sanjeev the, medit- Sanji, the medit- the meditation part is not difficult because you mentioned it so therefore i want to address that sure. it's very very simple just take three meditation sitting uh, and half an hour and it is experiential it is not that you need to believe in anything you will start getting some experiences once you start getting experiences then you move forward not because you are listening to sanjay bhartia that you start by listening to me just do take three sittings from a preceptor then the experiences will start if you get an experience please go ahead and do it it will change their life and i am advocating this heartfulness meditation there is a heart tap also on this you can go to the heart tap and uh, learn everything about it so are we talking about yogic transmission here which is where you experienced uh, possibly yeah. the state of samadhi yes yeah. hmm this yeah. is actually heartfulness is based on yogic transmission and uh, it actually cleans you up makes you purer once you become purer you do a yog it it actually is a yog with the absolute and uh, once the yog with absolute even if it's a minimal connection starts uh, life becomes very very easy we'll keep that in mind yeah. and i'm sure uh, there's been a lot of value that you've been able to share with us a lot of light that has been shed on your career and uh, once again hats off for doing such wonderful work and continuing to be the upright person the honest person the one with integrity that we can all feel so proud about 
thank you sanjay for your time today thank you look forward to meeting you thank when you are in delhi next or are catching a cruise and coming to meet you when <laughs> when covid uh, allows us to move out yeah. any last words that you would have for our viewers thank you uh, this life is very precious very very precious live it fully and those three things which i mentioned if you start using those three things you will really be very happy and uh, successful so these are my last words and sanjeev my last word to you is that start doing meditation thank you <laughs> <laughs> shall take the lead and the advice sir <laughs> thank you so much